The Mustang really represents a simpler time and probably a more exciting time. Simpler in the fact that when a young kid sits in the car, they're looking at roll-up windows, little vents you have to turn. They're looking at the manual process for everything, which is a big eye-opener for them. But it's also the excitement of something loud and raucous. The Mustang does everything with a lot more drama and style than today's cars. So if you look at the actual performance numbers, the Honda Odyssey would blow it away, zero to 60. But the joy and excitement of getting to zero to 60 at a slower pace is in the Mustang. So I have people kid me saying, hey, you're hot riding around in your Mustang. I'm like, well, no, I'm not. That minivan was actually leaving me in its wake. It just seemed like I was having a lot of fun because there's so much more drama and adventure with an older car. Taking the Mustang out is an exercise in the adventure of the drive. The task doesn't matter. It's just a thrilling, freeing option to fire it up, hear it roar, watch it warm up, top down, laying into it, shifting through the gears. I'll go out of my way to take the right roads to enjoy the ride versus taking necessarily the most direct path. But even taking the most direct paths is a lot of fun. My name is Greg Stanley. I drive a 1966 Mustang convertible. It was the first pony car, meaning it was the first car that was geared towards more the younger generation. And there wasn't anything really in Ford's portfolio or anyone else's portfolio at that point that a buyer could customize and make it however they wanted. So you could get the Mustang as a six cylinder hardtop grocery getter, or you could soup it up, you can get the hypo, you can get a fastback. Whatever you wanted to do, you could customize it to your taste. And so the Mustang actually spawned the creation of the Camaro, the Firebird, the Barracuda. It created the entire pony car wars, which lasts until today with the Mustang and the Camaro still battling it out. I was asked to test drive and appraise a 1966 Mustang from a friend of ours. While I was driving it, I drove by my wife's office and the first thing she said when she came out, she said, why don't you have one of these? And I said, I don't know, why don't I have one of these? And I went on the search. I found it on Craigslist and what initially drew me to the car was the fact that it had a hypo badge and it was a four speed non-AC car. So I originally thought it was one of the rare K-coded Mustang convertibles, which would have been quite a find. As I researched it some more, it turns out it was not, but it was a factory A-code, four barrel, four speed, in okay shape. So it was a nice find. The best thing about the car was the engine. The engine is original, it's been rebuilt. I put in new floor pans, new frame rails, new torque boxes. Other than that, the body was in great shape. I verified the date codes on every single body panel. I had it bare metal repaint. We took out any rust or any slight dents that we did find. I haven't redone the interior more than clean it up, restore the console, put in new carpet. The seats are probably about 10 years old, but they're in great shape. A lot of the little things that didn't work before now work. It's a never ending process, so there's always a list of things to work on, but it's a fantastic driving car. luxury half performance so it does have the hypo badges which isn't factory correct for this car but since it's been documented back to 1967 I'm keeping it on the car it also has a hypo rally pack which goes to 8,000 rpms and the date code on that actually goes back to 1965 as well it also has the original window sticker which lists 17 options on it which is really rare for 66 the only way you could actually verify a lot of the options was to actually have the original window sticker so that was a great find to come with the car 
It is the original ID Green. People ask me if I ever was tempted to change the color. And since I have the original window sticker, I wanted to keep it as factory authentic as possible. It has a white pinstripe, which was actually an option called the Exterior Decor Group. The redline tires were factory options. The style steel wheels came with the car. So from an exterior perspective, it's right on. The license plates are 1966 for Ohio, which is kind of cool. And then I created some license plate frame surrounds and I had it with the original dealership called Hetch Motor Sales out of Detroit, Michigan. So I kind of wanted that vintage recognition to the original dealer that sold the car. The window sticker is from the Mustang Owners Club. And there's a bit of a mystery around this. It seems like this club was formed in the early 70s when the Mustang was very popular, but it has since disappeared. I didn't want to replace the windshield because I would lose the sticker. And the owner who bought the car in 1967, she was kind enough to give me the t-shirt, which was part of the club. And John Clore at Ford, he's currently researching it to see if they can get a little bit more information on this particular club. One of the joys I've had with this car has been putting the history together. So I put together a book. The book includes everything from the lineage of owners, including interviewing the second owner who's 86 years old in a retirement home in Flint, Michigan, to documenting every single body panel, the rebuild process, documenting any of the codes on the engine to transmission, how rare it is from a Mustang perspective. That's been a lot of fun, putting it all together for the next owner. I drive this car as often as I can. I don't take it out daily, but I do try to drive it at least a couple times a week. My biggest fear is to have something go wrong with the car where it's sat up and then all of a sudden it's not being driven for a season. So I'll take this car out on a cold day. I just, I love driving it. The time I had to go three months without it about killed me, but got it back, put it back together and got it back on the road. The most rewarding part of owning this Mustang is that it turned out it's a really special Mustang. There's not many that have limited documented ownership. The options list is kind of cool and different. The quality that this car was built, the engine rebuild, the fun factor. I've had many folks that have driven this car, have driven many other Mustangs, and they just said this one's a lot of fun to drive. So it's all of those things together that has made it something hard to let go of. The automobile, in its basic sense, is freedom. People can cross the country in a matter of days versus weeks, but then also creativity and customization. So you could take a car and customize it to your own taste, whether it's from the factory with the options you choose, or it's what you do once you get the car. So it really reflects your personality. Anyone who sees a car as just transportation from point A to point B, they're missing this huge, exciting experience that unfortunately is getting diluted more and more as cars become more and more similar. That's why we'll always have some type of aftermarket industry, hot riders, customizers, and why we'll also always have some type of classic car, used car market. When you think about autonomous cars coming, that's a great way to get your work done, but you're missing a huge amount of joy and pleasure by taking the steering wheel out of your hands.